The Quran is not a Muslim book. Part 2 Why the Quran is not a Muslim book The Quran was revealed by God to Prophet Muhammad over 23 years from 610 AD in the cities of Mecca and Medina in Arabia. It is the last scripture revealed by God and his final testament to humankind. It consolidates the messages delivered by God's prophets into one book, representing a single, unified system of submission to God alone for the world. Though the people who originally received the Quran were Gentiles, meaning those who had not received a scripture previously, the Quran is meant for all people, independent of their religious, social, cultural, or geographical background. It is not the exclusive ownership or domain of the people of Arabia, or any community that may make such a claim. Since the Quran is God's final message to the human race till the end of the world, he has preserved its content exactly as it was from when it was revealed to Prophet Muhammad. Unlike all other scriptures from God which have been afflicted with several distortions or lost some of their content over time, the Quran is the only scripture in existence that is intact down to every letter. Not a single piece of information is missing or altered from the original Arabic text, the language in which it was revealed. This can be confirmed by referring to a copy of the Quran anywhere in the world. Another aspect to note is that Arabic is an existing language among the five most widely spoken around the world. Because of this, the Quran's message can easily be translated and verified. The languages of many previous scriptures from God are much lesser known comparatively. All this is not a coincidence or something that just happened out of nowhere. It is part of God's divine plan to let humans always have His exact, original, and unaltered message to them so they may live happy on earth and forever in paradise after they die. Up till now, only a small percent of the projected human population has come into existence. The majority of humans are yet to come into this world and inherit God's purified and consolidated message. The corruptions plaguing all religions including Islam, Judaism, Christianity, Hinduism, Buddhism, will simply die out and submission will prevail. Any source or scripture that proclaims a spiritual system after Quran will not be one revealed by God. Therefore. With a common scripture for all people, the future is not really about being a Jew, Christian, Hindu, Muslim, Buddhist, Sikh, Zoroastrian, or anyone else. These are just generic terms that identify people by their religious lineage today. They don't determine whether the people actually know much about or follow the religion they were brought up under. The future is really about choosing total submission to God alone or not. God's guidance is available to everyone, and He alone will judge them equitably. And this is why the Quran is not a Muslim book, or a scripture only meant for those who are known as Muslims today. The Quran is God's book of submission to Him alone for all people to lead a happy life on earth and achieve success in the hereafter. Even those who are from traditional Muslim background must follow God's system correctly if they want to be counted as true submitters. There are no special privileges for them by virtue of their previous connection with the Quran. More about the Quran's role in the future of the world and how people of all religions can use it to achieve peace and happiness in their lives without changing their religious identity is explained in parts 3 and 4. But before that, let us answer two logical questions you may be wanting to ask about preservation of the Quran's content and corruption of practice. 1. If the Quran is totally intact today, is it possible that its content can be lost or corrupted someday? The Quran is God's final testament to humankind. 
a single, unified scripture representing all his scriptures and messengers. Since it is for all people till the end of the world, God has preserved its content and made it impossible to alter or destroy. The Quran is protected by the presence of a numerical code based on the number 19 that guards every letter and word of the Quran. This is a unique phenomenon never found in any human authored book. Every element of the Quran is mathematically composed, proving beyond doubt that God exists and that the Quran is His complete and final message for the world. Besides authenticating every letter in the Quran, any attempt to distort its content will be exposed and eliminated by the code. This superhuman phenomenon is the most powerful and immutable information encryption technology that cannot be duplicated by humans. 2. If the Quran's message is intact, does it mean there is no corruption in the way it is followed? Indeed, the religion of submission to God alone, described in the Quran, is definitely corrupted. But it is corrupted only in the way it is followed, not in its scriptural content, which is totally intact and original. All other religions are corrupted both in the way they are followed and in their scriptural texts which are not fully intact or have been altered from the original. The corruption in practice of the Quran's message by Muslims is for the same reason all other religions from God are corrupted in practice, which is that people do not actually follow God's guidance from their scripture. Instead of following the Quran alone, what Muslims really follow are man-made rules, blind traditions, conjecture, and false interpretations by their religious leaders and scholars. Despite the command not to follow any source other than Quran for religious guidance, they follow other books, such as the Hadith and Sunnah, which were never decreed by God. The Hadith and Sunnah are satanic innovations blasphemously attributed to Prophet Muhammad about 200 years after his death. They are supposed sayings and traditions of the Prophet which are often contradictory and also have nothing to do with the Quran. They can never be proven, and even if that were possible, they cannot be followed because they were never decreed by God or the Prophet in the first place. The Hadith and Sunnah are similar to what Christian scholars have maintained for years, that some portions of the Old and New Testaments are not what was originally delivered by the prophets of Israel and Jesus. Rather, as in the case of the Gospels, they are reflections of people who in all likelihood never met Jesus, and so recorded only what they gathered from oral traditions about Jesus and his message. The Jews have a similar situation with the books of the Mishnah and Gemara, which are traditions followed in place of the original messages brought by the prophets of Israel. Corruption of practice is different from corruption of content. While Satan will not be able to corrupt or destroy the Quran, he can certainly mislead people or repel them from it. As pointed out in the beginning of Part 1, the ego is Satan's primary tool to inspire people to follow their own opinion instead of God's guidance. Another method Satan uses quite successfully to lead people away from God's guidance is to make religion appear difficult and inconvenient to follow. This is a totally opposite picture to how God has designed religion. God's purpose of sending scriptures is so that people may lead happy lives and develop their souls to return to Him forever after they die. God knows that if He made religion difficult, people would not follow it. So He has made religion an enjoyable practical system of life that blends beautifully into everyone's day, with plenty of freedom to pursue life as they wish, as long as righteousness is maintained. You can certainly have a lot of fun. You can sing, dance, study, Travel, enjoy sports, marry, have children, feast, own fabulous homes and luxuries, achieve great professional success, and so on. Do anything you like, 
as long as you live within God's parameters of righteousness to find in His Scriptures. God wishes for people convenience, not hardship in practicing religion, so they follow it and benefit from it. Once you lead your life in accordance with God's guidance, you can experience a life of dignity, respect, and good provisions, because your actions will have God's approval. Of course, God can simply banish Satan and make everyone follow his guidance. But it is God's system to allow Satan to present his point of view, so the distinction between those whose hearts are pure or denying is made. God has given humans their eyes, ears, and brains, and they are responsible for using them. Therefore, on the day of judgment, no one will be able to blame God for their fate if they don't make it to heaven. They will not be able to claim that they did not have God's exact guidance to follow in their hands. The sad truth is that like with millions who became victims of Satan's influence in the past, millions more will continue to be misled by him and make the wrong choice. They will continue to disregard God's guidance and live by their own opinions instead. Only the lucky few whose hearts are sincere will kill their egos and make the right choice. How the Quran will benefit the world in the future is covered in Part 3, titled, The Quran's Role in the Future of Humankind and America's Participation in This Process. End of Part 2 Get all four parts of The Quran is Not a Muslim Book at masjidtucson.org in the Quran section. This video is the property of Masjid Tucson. Copyright 2017. All rights reserved. Website masjidtucson.org. Email info at masjidtucson.org.